Brian Lee. J Rock has come back to you too. What is happening in here? In here with the millions and millions of J Rock fans from all over the world. Oh, you are right here with J Rock, baby. J Rock is here because we got some gameplay reveal from the upcoming Crash Bandicoot for the PS5, I believe. I'm not mistaken. I don't know if it's coming out for PS4, I think it's just PS5. But regardless of that, J Rock is here. And we're about to watch 14 minutes of some gameplay. Sit back, relax, kick back, get your popcorn ready. Let's check this out, shall we? Oh, oh look at this outfit. Crash's outfit. <laughs> so good. The master of subtlety. Uh, <laughs> right. Look at him. He's a charmer. Hey everybody, welcome to PlayStation Underground. Before we introduce our developer guest from Toys for Bob, we're super excited to showcase a brand new cinematic from Crash Bandicoot 4, It's About Time, featuring a certain character's very exciting return. So we'll stay quiet while playing that for you now. Okay. Oh, thank you so much. Wait, Tana? But you're different. You're not from our universe. Hmm. It's good to see you guys. It's been a long time for me. We lost touch in your universe too, huh? Yeah, you could say that. <laughs> what did we like, die or something? What? No! Nope. No, but no, definitely not. So how are things in your dimension? <clears throat> the usual. A bunch of evil scientists attempting interdimensional domination. Huh. So, uh, what you're collecting? Crystals? Mm -hmm. Gems? Masks. Ooh, fun. Well, good luck with that. <gasps> Wait, you're not coming? Sorry, I fly solo. But I'll, I'll lend a hand where I can. In fact, I already have. <laughs> Aww. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of PlayStation Underground. You got Tim and Kristen here. Hey. And we are so excited to be joined by Lou Studdard, producer on Crash 4, It's About Time, and Mandy Beninov, a writer on the game. Thanks so much ah. for joining us for a look at Crash Bandicoot 4. Yeah, glad to be back. Great to be here. Well, Lou and Mandy, we're absolutely honored to have you both on to reveal Tana and Crash Bandicoot 4, you know, first with that awesome cutscene and now with a first look at her gameplay. So where do we begin? Yeah, so uh, today we're super excited to be on PlayStation Underground revealing uh, kind of our last playable character. This is Tana. Yeah. Awesome. She's got a new style. It's exciting to see her like in this this version. Yeah, no, she's, uh, you know, it was really exciting for us to kind of re-envision her role in the game. Um, and so this is actually, as you saw in the, the cinematic at the start here, this is Tana from another dimension. <laughs> And so this is kind of our version of a, a unique, kind of playable version of Tana. Alt Tana. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is great. And she's got it definitely, you know, one thing that's been really cool seeing all the different playable characters for Crash 4 is, you know, ah! Crash and Coco have a, a very traditional play style for, you know, Crash Bandicoot. But then you have, you know, Cortex, who who kind of uses his his blaster to change enemies and then recently revealed dingo dial and his vacuum cannon so what what sets tana apart you know gameplay wise that we're seeing here yeah so tana's kind of all about being like an action hero yeah she looks like it and so for her she's actually got a couple of really unique maneuvers that kind of change her gameplay uh when compared to crash and coco or the other playable characters um primarily she time? has uh what we call her hook shot it's kind of a grappling hook yeah. that allows her uh to traverse the level uh really speedily and then you can also see she's the only character that can wall jump mm. um, and so for her it's all about kind of quick traversal and comboing these different maneuvers together oh there's that hook cool yeah it is yeah cool. going from um a rope swing to a hook shot uh to a rail grind to a wall <laughs> jump she's all about being fast nimble mm. uh in ways that the other characters aren't 
Nice. I love yeah. her design too. Like just like the leg warmers and the hair. <laughs> like it's very like eighty ah. action hero. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I love it. Yeah, that's actually something that our, our art team was really focused on was kind of making her seem like she's been on adventures and she's kind of found, you know, her own personal style and way forward in the world. Yeah. Nice. And and so we're seeing color splash out of her here. Um, what's going on there? Yeah, so this is actually a look at uh, one of our, our newly revealed modes called Inverted Mode. And so it's our kind of souped up take on a mirror mode. And so what we've got is kind of an inverted level layout, uh, but then also this each is, of the dimensions the has their own new and unique kind of art style and uh, experience. And so this one that we're showing off today that Tom is playing through uh, is one where the world is black and white, but all ah, the options that you yeah. paint to the environment. Okay, very cool. Yeah, gotta watch out for those sharks. Yeah, it looks like, you know, no matter who, what character you're playing in Crash 4, the, that familiar, familiar but, you know, challenging but fair difficulty is there. Um, <laughs> I, I wanted to ask a question, you know, Mandy, for you, um, what it was like revisiting a character like, like, you know, Tana, who's familiar, but this is a different take, and, you know, she's been kind of out of the picture for a little while. You know, what was it like bringing her back uh, in this new way? Uh, it was really cool. I mean, the nice thing about doing an alternate universe character is it's kind of a blank canvas. So um, obviously I had the art to go on as to what she looked like, but yeah. it was really fun trying to figure out who she was and what her place in the story was. Sorry, I just, I love this recycle bin. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you got to go, as, as long as you can be useful and repurposed in your, you know, afterlife, that's good. Yeah, in the future, they can even reuse bandicoot corpses. That's, that's good. <laughs> you know, you got to get resourceful. Uh, that's awesome. One thing I'm curious about um, is, is with... Uh, the different characters being playable so how does it work for you know you pick up the game and and you start playing is it a, like a linear progression of stages and and you'll play different characters for different stages or can you go back to the same levels as a different character kind of how does it work uh for, for when folks are going to be playing it Sure. So the, the main adventure is a linear series of stages. We've kind of taken our cue from uh, Crash Bandicoot 1, and we've got what we call the dimensional map, which is kind of this overview of the levels, and that allows us to introduce new mechanics and new, me new characters along the way. Now, the three uh, additional playable characters, Tana, Cortex, and Dingo Dial, will be introduced with their own <laughs> main yeah, level story uh, to get you up to speed on how they play, what their move sets are, so we can kind of train you and how to play them and introduce their storylines. But from that point on, uh, they actually are mostly in these optional levels that we call timelines. And so these timelines are these really fun levels where half of the level is playing mm. as uh, these unique characters in their own level section. Mm -hmm. And then you see how their story uh, interacts with Crash and Coco. Interesting. So it's more like they're, this is like the sideline of what's happening? Yes, exactly. And and so it was kind of fun is, you know, when we were working on this and, you know, when Mandy was doing uh, the, the writing and figuring out how we wanted to do this, we kind of joked, you know, of each of these different characters have their own way of interacting, mm -hmm. where Cortex being, you know, a, a villain is doing stuff to hinder Crash and Coco. Uh, Dingo Dial is just kind of an accidental uh, tourist in all of this, and so he's mostly just kind of causing havoc unknowingly. But then Tana is all about almost being kind of like a guardian angel on the sidelines. Aw, she's looking out for him. That, that, that's awesome. And from it, I like that it's kind of this interesting contrast to, to Cortex, who's kind of causing destruction that might hinder the progress of, you know, Crash and Coco in their, their stages. But, you know, the one thing I'm curious about, too, is from a gameplay and sort of narrative perspective, like, Tana's, you know, um, her abilities to, like, you know, everything from her animations, you know, whereas Crash might have sort of like a belly flop or something like that. She has this really, like, intentional ground pound, you know. What does her, her new design sort of say about her as um, a character in Crash 4? Sure. I mean, Mandy, do you want to speak to that? Sure. Um, I think... The biggest thing is it speaks to her past in her universe, which you don't really see, but just the fact that she's an experienced, capable adventurer. Um, this really isn't her first rodeo, and so I think that really shows through her animations and her moveset and all that stuff. 
Yeah. yeah. This underwater level is just, I love, I love how it, like, she's kind of slowed down and has to move a little bit more agilely, I guess. Yeah. Is that another inverted uh, level? It is, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so this is actually the inverted version of this future dimension, and so it totally changes the way that the, the level feels. It really does, yeah. I love that because it really just adds to the replayability of like, you think you already know how this level runs and then going through it again with this different style, just it just adds that extra layer. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's really fun because what we found is playing the Crash games, you build a muscle memory. Mm -hmm. And so you end up like, you actually see, you know, especially now that we have this death counter, you see your, you know, skill grow, which is by kind of re replaying it and knowing the challenges. And so we wanted to create a mode that completely messed with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and completely Completely made your you know, muscle memory betray you, and you actually had to learn and relearn the levels over again to make it feel really fresh. I love that. Uh, that's that's really cool, and I'm also just a huge fan of seeing. I, I love wall jumps in game, and, and and growing up with like side-scrolling platformers from like the eight and sixteen bit era, like just wall jumping is it can be so liberating and, and requires such you know precision and skill. So it's it's fun to see that in you know a crash game. Uh, also, it's fun to see. Uh, you know, enemies stack on top of each other to try to take you out with uh, flailing cutlasses. Um, so yeah, what are we looking at now in terms okay. of um, gameplay here? Yeah, so we wanted to uh, show off a little bit more uh, Crash and Coco, of course. Ah. Um, just kind of, you know, to make sure to know <laughs> the game as well. I'm loving her pirate costume. Yeah, that's actually the other thing that we uh, recently unveiled is that um, you can actually find uh, gems in levels and kind of earn gems, and these gems are used level by level to unlock additional skins for the game. Nice. And so this cool. is something that's, you know, it's not a, a microtransaction or a purchase, it's purely, you know, a, a game experience thing, but we wanted to show off some of those skins, especially the ones that are, are fun because they're themed to the world that you're in. And so uh, we started the video taking a look at Tana in kind of a, a pirate-themed dimension level. Uh, and here we've got Coco doing uh, some similar exploration, but in a different level and wearing her awesome pirate outfit. Nice. Awesome. I loved earlier when she was able to like whip one enemy right into the other. <laughs> yeah. So satisfying. Yep. Uh, and yeah, in the interest of you know showing off the variety of Crash Four, I guess it's just worth noting that this is a, a pre this is pre-recorded gameplay. We're not doing this live as we're talking, uh, just because we did want to be able to kind of show a bunch of different. Uh, you know, uh, examples of the gameplay yeah. all at once. But I, I, I'm loving this world um, and sort of the pirate theme. Um, and oh, I, I did I like get a chance to play down. a little okay. bit of Crash 4 and try these sort of like rail grinding sequences. And it's a lot of fun. One thing I really liked is that when you're controlling them underneath on the underside of the rails, you have you have control over kind of where their body's angled so you can <laughs> kind of dodge incoming um, oh attacks. Oh, look at this outfit. Crash's outfit. <laughs> <laughs> so good. <laughs> The master of subtlety. Uh, <laughs> That's right. Look like at I'm going to be your master. So is this his future, his future get up. Uh, That's right. Yeah. Okay. Future this is what we're all gonna look like in the future. So get used to it. <laughs> I heard it here first. But... Yep. <laughs> Anything time. to make me feel alive, you know. This is, this is young what I could use. Um, I love this. So this is the uh, the same sort of themed stage as we were looking at with with Tana underwater, but this is just um, it's sort of default look. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Uh, yes. So yes, okay. this is this is uh, what we call the snacks dimension, okay. um, because this is kind of the culinary capital of the universe. This is the the neon city, <laughs> and uh, there are food trucks throughout. Um, and it's actually Ooh, what we wanted to do okay. was make a, a futuristic world that was ultra, you know, happy and positive. We didn't want to make, you know, a super dark, depressing dystopia. And we actually went and, uh, you know, made this super fun, super vibrant, futuristic city. And, and yeah. we actually have signage of different cultures and different uh, languages go. represented because this is just the hangout of the universe. That's great. And, and we're also, um, you know, seeing some of the uh, the quantum mass gameplay here, too. So um, that will, will change the the you know, different elements of the gameplay, you know, from slowing time to phasing things in and out of reality and what have you. So one thing just worth calling out there. All right, so we're just about out of time. Lou, Mandy, thank you so much for joining us on PlayStation Underground. Hey. Pleasure to be here. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yep, and Crash Bandicoot 4, it's about time, hits PS4 on October 2nd, 2020. Xerox says this. Oh, the game looks pretty good. 
I didn't know it was coming out for the PS4. It comes out of PS4 next month. Um, so I'm gonna have to check this out. I'm gonna have to check this out. It looks pretty good. It looks pretty fun. I like the different modes and whatnot, the different worlds, the different um, excuse me. Um, loving the different ways each character kind of traverses the world in their own way. Um, what is it, Tana? I can't remember her name. But she can wall jump, she has a hook, and then, you know, good old Crash does what he does. So, but this game looks pretty fun. I like the colors. I'm a big color guy. Um, J-Rock likes to, you know, the, 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 the mode where you get to spin and you're throwing the colors around. That's very creative. I actually like that little little touch to that so J-Rock says uh, you picked his interest and uh, he's gonna give this game a shot he's gonna check it out and uh, see how it goes I'll let you know what I think about it what I'm done you know doing what I do with it post your comments down below and let J-Rock know what you thought of his reaction to this video no rhyme intended on that line and if you enjoy the great ones reaction to this make sure you hit that like button subscribe to the people's channel and share all right Make sure that you hit that bell so that you can be notified when it's time to be electrified. Thank you for joining J-Rock. Until we meet again. Mamba, Gigi, and Wakanda forever. If you smell what J-Rock is.